Capitalism, 1995. Holy shit. <laughs> In this game, we will guide you through setting up your first company. First, we need to introduce you to the game controls. The words on the map are city names. As in the real world, business prospers where people come together. Notice the highlight box in the regional map. The area surrounded by the highlight box is magnified in the detailed map window. Ah, uh, just wait one thing. Only speech. Thank you. Now that you have a basic understanding of the world, it's time for you to build your first company. Oh, that's it? Click the build button. These are the types of firms that you can build in capitalism. A department store is the easiest to set up and operate, so that is where you will start. The location of the department store can greatly influence its profitability. Here are a few suggestions for a good department store site. Select a city with sufficient population to support strong sales. Mm. Building the firm near the city center will attract more customers. Remember, though, that a good location always has a higher land cost. I see. Now choose a location for your department store in the detail window. The cost to build this store is shown here. You have $10 million cash and can Holy afford shit. it without difficulty. Now press the build button. Congratulations! You have just set up your first department store. Now click the information button to look at your... This is a picture of the interior of your department store. This is the logo of your company. This area shows some key information about your department store. This is the revenue graph for your company. So click the layout button to see the inter... There are nine slots here. Each slot represents a space where you can set up... <laughs> yeah, I remember this. ...functional unit. Let's set up a purchasing unit right now. Double click on this slot. This is your purchasing unit, and these are your employees. You have just created jobs for the city. We and the mayor of the city thank you for your contribution. You also need sure. to set up a sales unit. Double click on this slot and select a sales unit. Oh, I see. So I buy from other people, other factory maybe. And this is the sale unit. Makes sense. Now you have both the purchase and sales units. But you still need to tell the workers in the purchasing unit to move the purchased goods to the sales unit. Of course. Link these two units together by switching on the... Now your company is ready to operate and earn some money. Let's purchase some goods from outside suppliers, which in turn, next click the link supplier button. In capitalism, you can produce goods locally or import them from overseas countries. At the beginning of the game, there aren't too many good local suppliers yet, so mm -hmm. we will import some goods. Oh, cool. In this game, the government has built two seaports. One supplies consumer goods and the other supplies raw materials. Double click here to highlight the seaport. These are the products available from the seaport. Before picking a product, you must consider several factors. The most important are price, quality, and brand. The price is shown here, but our total cost also includes a freight cost related to the distance between your department store and the seaport. Oh, I see. The quality and brand of the products are represented as numbers. Since brands of imported goods are probably unknown to local buyers, their brand ratings are always zero unless you arrange some advertising for them. The overall rating is calculated based on the price, quality, and brand rating. Low price, high quality, and a high brand rating assure a high overall rating. The overall rating is displayed here as an indicator. Each portion represents a different aspect of the product, and their combined rating becomes the overall rating of the product. The yellow portion represents the price attractiveness of the product, the green portion represents its quality, and the orange portion represents its brand rating. Since the product's brand rating is zero, you do not see any orange portion right now. It seems that you could simply pick the product with the highest overall rating, but you must consider other factors, such as the freight cost, demand of the product in your city, and the products offered by your competitors. We will discuss each of these factors, but right now, let's just pick a product to keep things moving along. Click the link button to establish a purchase link with the supplier. This tells your purchasing unit to buy this product. Your staff is now preparing to take delivery of the goods from the supplier. In capitalism, you only need to tell the purchasing unit which product you want to buy. Your staff will keep purchasing the product until the supply of the product is no longer available. Currently, the goods you have ordered 
are still on their way to your department store. Oh, really? Now they are being unloaded and moved to the sales unit. Once the goods reach the sales unit, you are in the retail business. To find out sales information for the product, click the information button. This browser shows products that are being sold in the department store. At the sides of each product picture, there are several bar and line indicators. By reading these indicators, you find out how well the product is selling. Underneath the picture of the product, there are two horizontal lines. The upper blue one is the supply line, and the lower red one is the demand line. Since the product has just been launched into the market, there isn't much demand yet. Thus, the red line is extremely short and looks like a small dot. Another indicator you see here is the brand owner indicator. It shows the corporate color of the brand owner of each product. The sale information for the highlighted product in the browser is shown here. Three types of graphs are available. Revenue, quantity sold, and gross profit. Select the graph you want to see by pressing the appropriate button above the graph. You now have a basic understanding of how a department store operates. Yeah, and the, that's it. Next game. I think we did just that. So number two. In the previous instructional game, you set up your first department store and started to make some money. However, to survive in a highly competitive market over the long haul, you must understand the market status of your company as well as where your competitors stand. To help you, capitalism has several market analysis tools. The first one you should examine is the product detail report. Right-click on the product picture to display it. Here is the product detail report. First, let's look at the product browser. It lists all products of the same type currently being sold in the city, including yours and those of your competitors. The price, quality rating, and brand rating of each product are shown. To get more information about a specific product, simply highlight it in the browser. You then see the details related to price, brand, and quality displayed in the lower section of the report. These data may seem complicated, but they are just a condensed form of what you will learn in later lessons on manufacturing and advertising. For now, we will ignore these items. In the upper part of the report, there are two graphs. The left one shows the combined sales of the current product type in the current city over the past 12 months, while the right one shows the sales of the highlighted product only. In the default setting, revenue data are shown in the graphs. If you click the Quantity Sold Graph button, then Quantity Sold data are displayed instead. To the right of the graphs are a pair of pie charts. The left one shows each producer's share in the market, and the right one shows each retailer's share in the market. You can identify the owning corporation by the color of the pie sections. The white section represents the combined market share of all local competitors in the city. As just mentioned, there are local competitors in each city. Although their firms are not shown in the game map, they do compete directly with corporations in the game. Sometimes they may even be the major competing force in the market. Oh, really? You can refer to this area for the average price, quality rating, brand rating, and overall rating of the goods that the local competitors in the city are selling. Next to the information about the local competitors, you see the average price, quality rating, brand rating, and overall rating of all products from both corporations and local competitors. By comparing your numbers to the averages, you get an overview of your competitive position in the city. When consumers buy a product, they usually consider several factors. The three most important factors are price, quality, and brand. The importance of these three factors, however, varies from product to product. For example, when buying a pair of sports shoes, a consumer is concerned more about the brand than the price. In contrast, when buying a piece of frozen meat, a consumer is usually concerned more about the price and less about the brand. Based on this consumer behavior, the game assigns a set of predefined values to each product. These are price concern, quality concern, and brand concern. They are shown as percentages. Their sum is always 100%. For example, when a consumer is buying a product with 50% price concern, 30% quality concern, and 20% brand concern, the foremost criterion in the consumer's selection is price, with quality second and brand last. You may have noticed that these concern numbers are also shown on the top of the browser next to their descriptions. This lets you get a quick glimpse of the concern numbers while you are reading the information in the browser. 
Another important number is the necessity index. A high index value means that the product is necessary to people in their daily life. The demand for necessary goods is fairly constant, as people must buy them, even if the value they offer is not attractive. The attractiveness of a product is represented by its overall rating. In contrast, the demand for non-necessary goods is strongly influenced by the attractiveness of the goods. Thus, sometimes, cutting price does not result in reduced profit, as it can stimulate the demand. The increased demand may more than offset the reduced profit. This report also allows you to look at the market information for other cities. You can select a city you are interested in from this list. The population of each city is shown next to the city name in brackets. The product summary report shows much the same information but on several products at a time. It is useful when you want general information on several products at once rather than all the information on a single product. Let's look at that report now. This report has a lot in common with the product detail report. The most obvious similarity is the sales graph. It shows the combined sales of the current product type in the current city over the past 12 months, just like the one in the product detail report. The pie charts are also no different from those in the product detail report. The left one shows each producer's share of the market, and the right one tells each retailer's share of the market. There are several additional features in this report. One of the most useful features is display filtering. You can control the types of products listed in the report by setting the display filters. There are four display filters in this report. The first filter is the product availability filter. If you set it to has trade sales, the report shows only products that are available in the trading market. If you set it to the has retail sales, then only products that currently have corporate retail sales are displayed. The second filter is the product category filter. Set it to consumer goods to show only consumer goods. Set it to industrial goods to show only industrial goods. The third filter is the corporation filter. If this filter is set to a specific corporation instead of all corporations, the report will list only those products that are being produced or retailed by that corporation. The final filter is the city filter. If this filter is set to all cities, the report shows the combined sales of the listed products in all cities. If it is set to a specific city, then only to browse through the data. Use the scroll bar or click the body area of the browser. If you click the upper half of the body area, the browser scrolls up. Likewise, if you click the lower half of the body area, the product picture itself is a hypertext. Click the button to display. Okay, it's time to go back to your department. After reading the reports, you may need to take some actions to compete successfully in the market. You can react to competition by adjusting the selling price of your products. To change a product's selling price, use the new price spinner and press the confirm button to confirm the change. Price cutting is probably not the best way to outperform your competitors. In future instructional games, you will learn many new ways to enhance the sales of your products. Now take some time to review what you have just learned and try opening some new department stores in other cities. Farming. Suppose your plan is to set up a farm to grow barley. The information for barley is now shown. The best temperature and rainfall for growing barley and the months in which barley is sown and harvested are shown here. Besides crops, the farmer's guide also contains information about livestock. Select this livestock to see how the livestock portion. Each type of livestock can be used to produce raw materials for your factories or finished goods for your department stores. Of course, you can also sell goods directly to other corporations. Here are the products that can be made from the selected livestock. Now you have a basic understanding of the farmer's guide, it's time to set up your first farm. Click the OK button to close the guide. As stated in the guide, you should grow barley in an area with warm, cool, or cold climate and moderate rainfall. To find such an area on the map, press the climate map button. Each color in the climate map represents a different climate. To grow barley, you can select a location in the orange region where the climate is warm. Click this area of the climate map. Next, click a location in the detailed map. The climate, rainfall, and soil fertility of the highlighted location is shown in this area. This location isn't bad, but the rainfall isn't enough to grow barley. To find a location with moderate rainfall for barley, click the climate button again to display the rainfall. Areas in deeper blue color have more rainfall. Click the climate map button one more time. Oh, okay. This is the soil fertility map. 
All farmers know that crops grown in a location with better soil fertility are better quality. When selecting a location for your farm, choose one with the highest soil fertility possible. When selecting a location for your farm, you should try to find a grassland location with warm, cool, or cold climate, moderate rainfall, and high soil fertility. Though it is possible to build your farm in any grassland, growing crops in a less favorable location will result in poor crop. Now choose a location for your farm and click continue game when you are ready to continue. Okay, I think this black dot is the best. Yeah, you see, one other percent. Uh, yeah, we need more water maybe or it's okay for barley. Let's see again. We must select piece of grassland with warm, cool or cold and moderate rainfall. Okay. Oh, we can zoom even more. Well, the soil fertility is suck. But let's just do it. Now click the build button and select farm. Click the build button, click the layout button to... Now double click this box. Click the grow crop button. Barley, yeah. Now the crop growing unit receives your order and will sow barley when the sowing month arrives. The crop growing unit will take care of sowing, growing, harvesting, and even storing your barley. A crop growing unit is very versatile. You have just set up a farm to grow barley. Now let's see how to set up some other units to raise livestock. Oh. Create a livestock raising unit in this slot. Click the raise live... What now? Chicken? Now set up a livestock processing unit next to the lot. Link the two units together. Once the... Click the process livestock and select frozen chicken. You may have noticed this red line and wondered what it meant. Each type of unit has different information shown in its unit info box. The lines summarize the operational status of the unit. To determine the meaning of these indicators, look at the manager's guide. It gives detailed information about the data shown in each type of unit. Here is the manager's guide. It can be started from the help menu. You can call it up any time in the game for a quick check on the meaning of the info displayed in any unit. Now Sweet. click the OK button to close the guide and continue the game. We still need a sales unit to sell the livestock products. Double click this slot to set one. Next, double click this line. Now click the information button to show the information about your farm. The livestock product is ready for sale and available to all interested buyers who are mostly retailers. Buyers are willing to purchase any product that is attractive in terms of price, quality, and brand. If you want to know who is buying your products, press the linkage button to put the map in. In this mode, any firms that have business relations with the highlighted firm are shown with lines joining them to the highlighted firm. Though not common, it is absolutely okay not to sell your products to external buyers. If you press the internal sale button, the product oh. will be sold only to firms owned by your corporation. Other corporations will not be allowed to buy this product. Hmm. However, those buyers who have been buying the products are not affected because you are not allowed to suddenly cut the supply of a product. You could raise its oh. price. To cancel an internal sale, I click see. the button again. You can set the default setting of the internal sale. If you turn on the internal sale option on the menu, then all your new products will be for internal sale only. You have learned the basics of farming and set up your first farm. Now it is your turn to market your products. You have your own sales outlet, the department store you built in the first instructional game, so you can link the products to the department store and launch the products efficiently. If you have difficulty locating your department store, oh, use yes, the corporation yes. filter button. Click to see only firms controlled by the highlighted firm's corporation. Right-click oh, it to choose the corporation used by the filter. To cancel the filter, click it again. When the filter is applied, you can use the F5 and F6 keys to rotate viewing the filtered firms. I want to check it now. Oh, wait. Okay, so I click over here. And this shows us everyone. And this is only us, maybe? Oh, I didn't know that. Oh my god. So, just until we see only us, then we never touch this button again. That's it. So now you never touch this button again. And you use F5 or F6. Sweet, sweet, sweet. And let's link it together and finish. So another purchasing unit over here. 
Link to supplier, F5 and F6, so sweet. So this is ours, serves, bingo. Oh, now it's uh, 79, <laughs> it was 11. So F5 and F6, sweet. So this is Milan, another purchasing unit, link to supplier, F6, take it. Sell unit, connect them together. And that's it. Yeah, that buster. So he's selling it for 1.35. And the quality is the same. Yeah, seem like we are losing money over here in the farm. I guess we are selling it for too much. We have a lot of stock and people are not buying it. And we cannot make a profit. So we have to reduce the price. Just a little bit more than what he's selling. And next thing we have to do is to go over here and make the price the same. We need to reduce the price over here so people will start to buy. Because over here we don't make a profit, but now it will rise up. Oh, fuck off. Now our share is worth like a, a triple than before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's going up. Finally, we fix it. We are selling chicken and we will make some money on the farm, but 40% less than what we planned. Yeah, you can see here. We are selling more, and over here we need to fix it too. He's taking the share of the city, as you can see. We are selling nothing, but not for long. You just have to reduce the price for now, and that's it. It will be fixed. Now the demand will go up, and we will make some money. Nice. What else can we do? Over here, I think we are the only one who is selling it. Oh, not anymore. So seem like he's uh, reduced the price a little bit under us, but it's okay. We are still selling a lot of it. And toy, yeah, there is a lot of demand for toy and we are not selling enough. Um, and we are the only one over here with the toys. So let's see if we can fix it. Sales of toys, I don't think so. So we will um, increase the price a little bit. And same goes for the camera. We are the only one who is selling it over here. Uh, maybe, no, for the camera also, we cannot because we have no space over here to make another sales department. And honestly, I don't think it's a good idea. Just increase the price. Over here, we are doing fine. I think it's finished. Oh, it's right click. Okay. It's right click. So this is how we can do it. Sweet. So now it's filter and uh, product beer, please. Yeah. Oh, nice, nice, nice. We found a way. Here is the factory of the beer. So we play with these buttons over here. Only the product now is enabled and we can select beer over here. And then F5, F6, we can see everything. So we are not going to make a beer. It's not worth it. Next game. Yeah, manufacturing. Let's In this wait. game, you will learn how to set up a factory and design production lines to produce goods that carry your brand. The manufacturer's guide contains essential information you need to manufacture a new product. The game contains over 30 different products, so it may be a while before you memorize how to manufacture them all. Suppose you plan to set up a factory to produce beer. You can obtain information about beer production by clicking on the output button and selecting beer. Do this now. Here is the manufacturing diagram for beer. It shows that the production of beer requires barley and aluminum. It also tells that you need five pounds of barley and one pound of aluminum to produce 17 cans of beer. The quality of the final product is influenced directly by the quality of the ingredients. Q40% means that in this case, the quality of the barley contributes 40% to the quality of the final product, beer. Not all inputs affect the output quality equally. Q5% tells you that the quality of the aluminum contributes only 5% to the quality of the final product. If 40% of the quality of beer is determined by the barley and 5% determined by the aluminum, what accounts for the other 55%? Um, RD. The manufacturer's guide has the answer. The quality of beer is 55% determined by the production technology of the manufacturer. We will discuss production technology later.
Please note that you can click on the pictures of some input materials and products. In this diagram, if you click on the picture of barley, it will lead you to the farmer's guide and display the information of barley. Now that you know which ingredients you'll need, it's time to set up a factory to produce barley. Factories can be built in urban, suburban, or rural areas. The choice is up to you. However, you will find most factories located in suburban areas. These areas provide a good mix of land cost, labor availability, and transportation. You need to select a location for your new factory. Find a promising piece of suburban land, then click the Continue Game button. Mm -hmm. Press the Build button and your factory will be built in the currently selected map square. Click the Layout button to see the layout plan for your... From the manufacturing guide, you'll recall that you need barley and aluminum to produce... Yes. Barley. First, you need to set up a pair of purchasing units to buy... Sure. Click the Link Supply. As you can see, there are lots of firms scattered on the map. To find one that supplies the needed raw materials, you need to use the Product Filter. Mm. Right-click the Product Filter button and select Barley from the list. You can... Now only firms that supply barley are shown. If the terrain map is too busy, you can display the profit map for a less cluttered display. Now it's easy to find the barley suppliers. Yes. Double click a dot representing a barley supplier in the map to select that supplier and click the picture of barley on the list of goods provided by this supplier. The barley will then be ready to link to your purchasing. Wait, I can also use done, the F5 and F6. Game button. Right? Yeah. Click the link button to connect. Yeah. That takes care of the barley. Now you need to do the same thing to purchase. Click the links. Right click the product. Double click it. Yeah, only this one. Click the link. If the supply of raw materials to your factory is broken, the event tracker button will appear here. You don't see it because there is no event right now. If you press the button, the event tracker points you to the place where the supply is broken so you can fix it right away. All I see. needed raw materials are now ready. Click on the product filter button to reset it. Now double click here to set up a manufacturing unit. Once the two purchasing units are linked to the manufacturing unit, production can start. Link the manufacturing unit to the first per link the manufacturing The factory can now begin production. Sweet. Notice the little blue boxes inside Beetle the manufacturing sweet. and purchasing units beer. change as aluminum and barley are turned into beer. Mm -hmm. The message, product quality 38 out of 100, means that the quality rating of your beer is 38 and the maximum quality possible is 100. The manufacturer's guide states that the quality of beer is 40% determined by the quality of barley. In this case, the barley has a quality rating of 50. It therefore contributes 50 times 40%, 20 rating points to the beer's overall quality. Thank you for letting me know that. The quality of beer is 5% determined by the quality of the aluminum. The aluminum you are using has a quality rating of 47, so it contributes 47 times 5%, two rating points to the beers. I think this quality. is the best explanation game ever. The mm -hmm. message, raw materials quality, 22 out of 45, describes the rating points contributed to quality from all raw materials. The first number, 22, is the amount contributed by the raw materials. In this case, that is 20 points from the barley and two points from the aluminum. The second number, 45, would be the quality contributed by perfect ingredients. Mm. The message, production quality, 16 out of 55, describes the rating points contributed to quality by the production technology. I the see. first number, 16, is the current contribution to overall product quality from these production facilities. The second number, 55, would be the quality contributed by the best possible production facilities. Your factory's technology rating for beer production is 30. Thus, the contribution to quality of the beer production process is 30 times 55% equals 16 rating points. To increase the beer production quality, you will need research and development. But that is discussed in another instructional game. Yeah, right. To sell beer, you need a sales unit, just like in a department store. Double-click here to link the manufacturer. As you build more and more factories, you may want to increase the capacity of a factory. This is accomplished by upgrading the equipment and training the factory's employees. Spending for training and equipment is set using this slider. The maximum amount you can spend 
is twice the amount of the factory's salary expenses. Training and equipment spending is automatically distributed evenly over all the units in the factory. Now click here to set the spending. In capitalism, the efficiency and productivity of each unit increases when its unit level is upgraded. All units start at unit level 1 and can increase the level to a maximum of 9. A unit's level decreases if the unit changes the product it is handling. For example, if the current manufacturing unit changed its production lines to manufacture cola, its unit level would decrease. You have learned the basics of manufacturing. Now you must... Thank you. Yeah, we have a competition over there. And it seems like you have brand and this is killing us. Next. Yeah, there you go. Brand and advertising. This is the beer produced by the factory you set up in the manufacturing lesson. Sales are weak. Yes, yes, we were talking the about it. The detail report provides information to help you understand why sales results are poor. Right-click the product picture to display the report. Your competitor's brand rating is up to 24 and yours is zero. Since the prices are the same, customers are buying the products of the company with the higher brand rating. This is keeping your market share quite small in this area and leading to low profits. To compete, you must increase your brand rating. A brand rating is the sum of two factors, brand awareness and brand loyalty. A brand rating cannot be changed directly. Instead, you must work on the underlying factors. The brand awareness rating measures how aware consumers are of this brand. People often buy a product simply because they are familiar with its brand. In capitalism, we capture this effect in the brand awareness rating. A product can achieve a high brand awareness rating if the brand has been advertised extensively, the product has been on the market for a long time, or if the brand is widely distributed. A brand loyalty rating is a measure of the attachment that a customer has to a brand. If brand loyalty is high, customers may continue to purchase that brand, even if competitors have superior quality and a lower price. Brand loyalty cannot exist without prior purchase and use experience. A brand must generate sufficient awareness before consumers will purchase and use the product. The higher the brand awareness, the more people will try the product and brand loyalty can increase faster. The brand loyalty of a product is greatly affected by the product's quality. If customers are satisfied after using the product, brand loyalty begins to build up. Conversely, low quality and a poor experience with the product decreases brand loyalty. If customers are very dissatisfied with the quality of the product, a negative brand loyalty can result. This indicates that customers will actively avoid buying this brand in the future. In addition to these ratings, another important attribute of a brand is the brand strategy. There are three types of brand strategy, a corporate brand, a range brand, and a unique brand. Wow. You can set your corporation's brand strategy in the brand section of the corporate detail report. Click here to close the product report. Click your corporate logo, a shortcut to the corporate detail report. Click here to see the brand report. This window shows that your corporation is currently pursuing the unique brand strategy. In this strategy, each product has a unique brand and each individual product needs separate advertising to establish and support it. Some corporations prefer the corporate brand strategy, which allows a corporation to use a single brand for all its products. When the corporation launches a new product, it is not starting from scratch to build up awareness of its brand identity. The investment required to launch a new product is therefore reduced. Oh. The drawback to this strategy is that the corporation is not perceived as a dedicated provider of a single category of product. The consumer may doubt the devotion of the corporation to the product, thus reducing their loyalty to the brand. Uh, I don't get it. Uh, this seems like the best way to go. In addition, Given the advantages and disadvantages of these two strategies, a corporation may choose a middle-of-the-road strategy, the range brand. In this strategy, products in the same product class are labeled with a single range brand. A range brand offers some benefits of the two other strategies, but also suffers from some of their deficiencies. Yeah, of course. To change the brand strategy, click the one you want. When the brand strategy is changed, all existing brand ratings are reset to zero. It is generally best to decide the brand strategy of your corporation at the beginning of the game. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. The brand strategy window also shows useful information about each corporation's brand. 
You can click any city or corporation to see how each brand is faring in each individual city. You should now have a basic understanding of how to manage your corporation's brands. Let's to carry out the advertising campaign, the first thing you need is an advertising unit. Double click here to create an advertising unit. An advertising unit will manage the adver The advertising unit is capable of handling more than one product at a time. Each unit the advertising unit is linked to will have its product advertised. Next, you must tell the advertising unit in which media firm, television station or newspaper publisher, you want your product advertised. Click the link media firm button now. This television station seems to be a fairly good choice. Select it now by clicking it. Here is how to read a media firm's statistics. <laughs> this is the population of the city where the media firm is located. Coverage is a measure of the potential audience that might see an ad placed with this media firm. Reach is the number of people that actually received an advertising message at least once in the past month from this media firm. Rating points is a percentage calculated by dividing reach by coverage. Cost per advertisement is the cost to place an advertisement with this media firm. Cost per thousand is the cost of exposing 1,000 people to an advertising message. The most important measure of the effectiveness of a media firm is its rating points. It summarizes the relative reach of the media firm. This should be your foremost concern when choosing a media firm to advertise your product. A graph is dedicated to showing the rating point history of this media firm over the past 12 months. Next to the rating point graph is a pie chart showing the share of the advertisers in the past month. The corporate color of each of this media firm's customers represents that corporation's advertising share of this firm's revenue. The white portion represents the share held by local advertisers. This firm doesn't have any corporate advertisers yet. It's the time to tell your advertising unit to use this television station for its ad campaign. The television station's statistics are shown here. Some additional information is also provided. Reach population is the percentage of the population who receive the advertising message. It is calculated by dividing the reach by the population. Daily frequency indicates the number of times an individual is exposed to an advertisement in a day. Monthly frequency indicates the number of times an individual is exposed to an advertisement in a month. For quick reference, the daily frequency and rating points are displayed in the ad unit's info box, denoted by the letters F and R respectively. Advertising frequency is significant, as a higher ad frequency will improve product awareness faster than a lower frequency. To increase frequency, you must increase advertising spending. To set the monthly advertising spending, click this slider. Important. This is the amount of money spent to advertise each product managed by the advertising unit. Therefore, an ad unit that manages the ad campaigns of four products will spend four times this amount each month on advertising. With this advertising scheme, your product's popularity will certainly rise. So this is the corporate brand. So it can be a nice boost if you have uh, very high quality items. And that one over here, yeah, everything reset again. But that range one, it's uh, by a product class. It makes more sense because some product you want to make them high as possible and some no. Raw material and production. In this game, you will set up. First, you need to locate a site with reserves of natural resources. Click the resource map to view all natural resource res On the resource map, locations that have natural re are represented by the first letter of the resource's name. For example, oil is shown on the map with double click on the letter G. Jump to a location with gold. This location seems to be a reasonable choice to set up a mine here. To take out a loan, you select the financial option from the action menu. This menu permits several financial actions. Click here to take out a bank loan. The first figure you should keep in mind is your credit. You should also now you can right click on the spinner. Press the borrow button to the total loan that your corporation has and the monthly interest payment of the loan is shown in this window once the transaction is now you can afford to build click the layout button to see the layout plan of the mine. A mine cannot operate without a mining unit. Pay special attention to the reserve level which is the amount of reserve remaining in the land. When it reaches zero, the reserve is exhausted and you can no longer mine the mineral in that location. Instead of linking the mining unit directly to a sales unit, it might be a good idea to set up an inventory unit between them. An inventory unit provides a place to store large quantities of raw material and can protect against unexpected surges in demand. This allows the mine to continue 
throughout an unexpected increase in demand. I see. Double click here to create. Double click here to set up a sale. Next, link the unit and double click this one too. Your mine is now ready for business. Here you see the summary information for the firm. The first three details are obvious. The fourth one, average utilization, needs some explanation. It tells how well you are using the capacity of the units in the mine. The utilization level of all units in the firm is in a range of 0 to 100. If the utilization level of this mine is high, you are running near the mine's current capacity. In this case, you can consider adding another team of mining and sales units to increase capacity. Note that most raw materials can be produced by setting up a mine. The exceptions are timber and crude oil. Set up a logging camp for timber and an oil well for crude oil. Setting up a logging camp or an oil well is very similar to the process for a mine. You have learned the basics of raw material production. Now set up a production line in your factory to make jewelry using the gold produced. When That's you good. Stock market. Most people agree that stock is an indispensable part of capitalism. In the game, the stock market lets you do most things that are allowed in a real stock market. First, you need a basic understanding of stock. Let's begin with the corporate detail report. The corporate detail report has more than a dozen sections, each with a different topic. Click here to open the stock section. The stock report has two sections. The first section lists the shareholders of the corporation and shows their shares in a pie chart. The second section of the stock report displays the stocks that the current corporation owns. Note that a corporation can own the stocks of other corporations. While this report is useful, it doesn't show the most basic information about a stock, such as the stock price. This information is shown in the overview section. Click here. The stock overview section contains information about the corporation's stock. The terms are explained one by one. This is the current stock price of the corporation, which is determined by the market. The equity per share is calculated by dividing the amount of the shareholders' equity in the corporation by the total number of outstanding shares of the corporation. The earnings per share is determined by dividing the amount of the corporation's annual operating profit by the total number of outstanding shares of the corporation. The price earnings ratio is calculated by dividing the stock price by the earnings per share. The dividend yield is a percentage calculated by dividing the dividend by the stock price. Dividends are the distribution of a company's earnings to stockholders. The total return to shareholders is a percentage calculated by dividing the total amount of return on one share over the past 365 days by the stock price. The return includes the dividend received and the profit gained from the rise of the stock price. This graph shows the stock price of a corporation over the past 30 months. As its name report implies, it only shows information. To invest in stocks, go to the stock market, either by selecting stock market in the action column of the game menu, or more conveniently by clicking here. In the game, you can buy stocks in person or via a corporation that is under your control. Now click here to enable your corporation to invest in stocks. Move your focus to the upper left section of the window, which has a stock browser showing all stocks available in the market. You can see the percentage of stock that your corporation owns by looking at the Owned Percent column. The Stock Value column lists the total value of stock owned by your corporation. Click here to highlight a stock. Once a stock is selected, the shareholders of the stock are listed here. In addition, you find the details about the highlighted stock in this area. The terms used here were introduced in the corporate detail report. Below the area is a graph showing the stock price over a specific period, which can be the past 30 days, past 30 months, or past 30 years. Select the period by clicking any of the three buttons below the graph. Now it's time to buy some stocks. This formula shows the amount of cash your corporation needs to pay for the stock, which is calculated by multiplying the total number of outstanding stocks by the percentage of stock to buy, and finally multiplying the result by the stock price. You can set the percentage of stock you want to buy. When a stock is highlighted, this percentage is automatically set to the maximum percentage you can buy. 
Note that click here to buy the stock from the public shareholder. So each time I buy, the price will go up, maybe? The stock price rise. Oh, yeah. Once the transaction is complete, the data here is updated, showing the percentage of stock your corporation owns now. Your corporation is also included as one of the shareholders in the shareholder list. Besides buying stocks of other corporations, your corporation can also buy back its own stock. The shares bought are taken out of circulation, therefore shrinking the number of outstanding shares. This can have a positive effect on earnings per share, which in turn can have a positive effect on the stock price. To have your corporation buy back its own stock, first click here to select your corporation's stock. Now click here to buy back 5% of the stock. Note that the total number of outstanding shares of your corporation is reduced. Due to the reduction of the total number of shares, the ownership percentage of the existing shareholders increases. This action can strengthen the ownership of existing shareholders in the corporation and reduce the risk of a hostile takeover. Yeah, hostile takeover. Insane. Note that when you buy or sell stocks, the transactions are always made with the public shareholders. If all shares of the stock that you want are in the hands of non-public shareholders, you may have to make a tender offer to the shareholders. A tender offer is an offer to buy shares of a corporation, usually at a price in excess of market. You may find a button labeled Offer here if a tender offer is necessary. Besides tender offers... So take over someone the can be a dick and refuse to sell. You can take over a corporation if you own more than 50% of its stock. A merger is allowed if you own more than 75% of a corporation's stock. However, we are not going to describe these actions in detail here, as we don't want to overwhelm you with too many details. No, you don't want me to cheat. This is like cheat. And we are going to do it. Next, yeah. we'll introduce you to some other common stock actions. Click the o call up the financial action window in the game menu. One of the actions you can take here is issuing new shares of your corporation. Click here. A corporation can raise funds by issuing new shares. When new shares are issued, they are offered to public shareholders and the cash received from the buyers contributes to the operating capital of the corporation. When your corporation issues new shares, you must make two decisions. First, you must decide the issuing price, which cannot be higher than the current stock price. Nobody will be interested in the new shares if they are priced higher than the market price. Secondly, decide the number of new shares to be issued. There is a limit on the number of new shares you can issue. You can expect a higher limit if your corporation showed promising results in the past year. You can often have a higher limit if you decrease the issuing price to make it more attractive to buyers. Another factor which affects the limit is the frequency at which new shares are issued. You cannot issue new shares too frequently. Otherwise, the market won't have enough time to digest the new shares. After you decide the number of new shares and the issuing price, the expected amount of money your corporation will receive after issuing new shares is shown here. If you are satisfied with the gross receipts, click the Issue Now button. Well, this is something that I don't intend to do unless we need money, but just for the tutorial, we issue 100,000 new share and uh, we get a lot of money now, right. I guess. Receipts yeah. have been added to your corporation's cash account. <laughs> this is like cheating, but... Your profit is going down an by that. Buy shares of a corporation. The investor probably expects a reasonable return in the future. Of course. That return usually includes the dividend paid by the corporation and the profit gained from the rise of the of stock. Of course. Because of this, you must consider the dividend paying policy of your corporation seriously. Click here to go to the dividend. This bank. game is amazingly complicated and it's so right. Some corporations try to pay a reasonable dividend each year to please the shareholders. However, it is not uncommon to find corporations that pay only modest dividends or even none to maintain an upward trend on their stock's price. These corporations actually reinvest their earnings back into the business, which promises better returns in the future. In the game, you can set a dividend payout ratio and let your corporation pay dividends based upon this ratio each year automatically. 
Under this policy, the dividend per share is calculated by multiplying the earnings per share by the dividend payout ratio. If you want to pay dividends this way, you must press this button, which authorizes dividends to be paid each year without your approval. If you want to change the dividend payout ratio, you should first set the new ratio here. Then click this button to confirm the change. If you want to approve the dividend, you can select the Ask Dividend Payout option. After that, at the end of each year, you see a window which lets you decide the exact amount of dividend to be paid for the year. Now it's time to leave here. Click on the OK button to close the window. This lesson is now complete. When you're yeah, done, complete for you, but I need to buy someone.